Welcome to JGRASP. My name is James Cross. In this short video, we'll explore some of the basic features of JGRASP, including opening a file, compiling and running a program, and running the program in the debugger. Let's begin by taking a look at the JGRASP desktop. It's divided into three regions. To the left, we see a tab pane with the Browse tab selected. This provides us with easy access to our files. We also have tabs for Debug, Find, and Workbench. These pop to the top as needed. To the right, we see the main work area where we'll write and edit our programs and then compile and run them. Below, we have a tab pane with tabs for Compile Messages, JGRASP Messages, Run I.O., and Interactions. Notice the three buttons on the lower left of the desktop. The first button allows us to change the desktop layout to full height left tab pane or full width lower tab pane. I'll change this to full height left tab pane. The second button toggles verbose messages on and off. These provide additional details when you compile and run your program, such as full paths and class paths. The third button allows us to open desktop windows maximized or unmaximized. I'll set this to open the windows maximized. Now let's open an existing Java file. The Browse tab is currently displaying the examples tutorial folder that comes with the JGRASP distribution. You can navigate to your own folders by using the up one level button or by double clicking a specific folder. Let's open hello.java by double clicking the file. Now let's compile our program by clicking build, compile. We can also compile by clicking the compile button on the toolbar. That's the button with the green plus. The results in the compile messages tab indicate a successful compile. In the browse tab we see this generated a new file named hello.class. Now let's make a mistake in our program by removing a semicolon. Now when we compile the program, an error message is reported in the Compile Messages tab and the line with the error is highlighted in the edit window. We need to correct the mistake and compile again. And this time we have a clean compile. Now we're ready to run the program by clicking Build, Run and we see our output below in the Run I.O. tab. We can also run the program by clicking the Run button. That's the red running person on the toolbar. We can add line numbers in the Edit window by clicking the Toggle Line Numbers button. Now the line numbers are not part of your program, but rather provide a convenient way to refer to specific lines in the program. By clicking the button again, we remove the line numbers. Now let's generate the control structure diagram by clicking the Generate CSD button or by pressing F2. The CSD can be generated for any syntactically correct program. As its name implies, it depicts the various control structures in your program. In the Hello program, we only have sequence, so the diagram is not so interesting. However, when your programs contain loops and if statements, the CSD can make your code much more readable. For example, let's look at the odd even program. It contains a loop, which contains an if else statement and an if statement. Now let's click the generate CSD button. A CSD clearly shows the control structures and the paths defined by them. The CSD also provides a nice folding mechanism. For example, we can fold up the entire program and then unfold it in layers by clicking the plus symbol. Or we can fold and unfold the entire program by double clicking the class symbol. If we're convinced the loop is working, we can fold it up and then concentrate on other parts of the program. Another nice feature is called CSD context hints. As the cursor is moved over the stem of a construct, if its first line is scrolled off the screen, then a context hint displays the line at the top of the window. 
For example, as I move the pointer from right to left, we see the top of the for loop, the main method header, and the class header. When you're editing a class with multiple methods, the context stamp provides a quick way to see what method you're working in. If we always want the CSD, we can turn on Auto Generate CSD. Now the CSD will be generated when a file is opened. Later, when editing a program, if changes disrupt the diagram, we can always regenerate the CSD by pressing F2 or clicking Generate CSD. Before we close the Odd Even program, notice that we have a button for each open file below the edit window. These buttons enable us to quickly switch from one file to the other. We can also arrange the buttons, and this is useful if you have multiple files open and you want to group several buttons together. Now let's close the Odd Even program. Notice the Browse tab is displaying the folder containing the Odd Even program. Since we still have hello.java open, we may want to see its folder in the Browse tab. The Change Browse Directory button, the folder with a B on it, will do just that for us. So it's an easy way to get to the folder containing the file you're working on, in this case, hello.java. Now let's create a new program by clicking File, New, Java. We're ready to begin entering the program. To save some time, I'm going to paste in the code. We can see that Hello More is just an expansion of our first Hello program. Now let's save the program. Notice that JGRASP chooses the name of the Java class, Hello More, as the name of the file. This is important since the name of the file must match the public class in the file in order to run your program. Now let's compile the program by clicking the green plus on the toolbar. The compile messages uh, indicate no errors. So now we can run it by clicking the red running person. Let's run the program in the debugger so that we can step through it one statement at a time. We need to set a breakpoint by hovering the mouse in the left edge of the window until we see the red breakpoint symbol and then click on the line where we want to stop the program. So we have our breakpoint set on the first print statement. Now we click the debug button. The program starts and runs down to the breakpoint and stops. Let's step through the program. If the program had variables, we could see them change in the debug tab as we step through the program. While we think of using the debug to find uh, and remove errors, it's also really useful for understanding programs or explaining programs to someone else. I really encourage you to run the, your programs in the debugger and step through your statements. This will be especially useful when you've written your own classes and methods. I can assure you that by stepping into the methods of your classes, you'll get a much deeper understanding of what happens when your program is executed. Now, just to review, we can open a file by double-clicking on it in the Browse tab. We can compile the program by clicking the green plus. We can run the program by clicking the red running person. And we can debug the program by setting a breakpoint and clicking the red bug and then stepping through the program. Well, I hope this brief introduction to JGRASP will get you started. For additional details, I encourage you to review the tutorials and other videos that are available at the JGRASP website, jgrasp.org. In the next segment, we'll take a look at interactions in JGRASP. Thanks for joining me.